Good afternoon, my name is Tyler Martin, and today we are going to be talking about turbines. Uh, you may not know this, but according to the Energy Institute of America, over 98% of electricity produced in the United States is produced by turbines. So here to talk to us a little bit about what turbines are as we move through our pro presentation this afternoon is Logan Frank. So Logan. Thanks, Tyler. Did you know that? According to the National Park Service, access November 21st, 2017, it wasn't until 1925 that even half of American households had access to electricity. In this day and age, it's hard to imagine living life without such a common commodity. Have you ever actually stopped to wonder how this electrical energy is generated? Although there are so many ways to generate electricity, nearly all of them use a turbine as the primary mechanism. Today, I'll give you a brief overview of the turbine and describe some of the basic mechanisms involved in its operation. At its core, the turbine contains an electrical generator which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. You can think of a generator as an electric motor hooked up in the opposite configuration. Instead of supplying power to turn a shaft, as you would normally imagine, the shaft is turned in order to generate the power. Now that we know the most important part of a turbine, how do we generate the needed rotation in the first place? Because of the physical properties of fluids, they can lend themselves well to imparting forces on objects as they flow past. In the case of a turbine, a rotor with angled blades is the object being moved. Because the blades are angled and are located around one central point, fluid passing over the blades imparts rotational motion to the rotor. This rotation is transferred by a shaft through a gearbox and is finally ready to be converted into power in the generator. With some of the basics out of the way, I'll now let Wax tell you a little bit more about turbines in hydroelectric power. Thank you, Logan. Hello, I'm Wesley Young, and I'll be telling you a little about hydroelectric power in dams. To start off, and according to the Energy Institute Agency, access on November 21st of 2017, 6.5% of energy produced in the United States was produced by hydroelectric power. This is the largest renewable resource production of power in the United States, and it's pretty impressive. Also, an interesting note about dams is that they are designed in a very interesting way about how they actually work. According to this diagram, water starts off in a reservoir at a higher elevation and it comes down through a gate into a tube which shoots the water in a jet type motion into a spinning wheel that turns the turbine which produces power in the generator. Then the generator produces the electricity and sends it off to the United States, in this case, to allow Americans to make their cup of tea or turn their microwaves on. Of course, the water is not just expelled, it has to go back down using gravity and shoots it down into a river or sometimes a lake, depending on where it's at. Now you might be wondering, how does this work? Well, when the water turns the turbine in the jet flight fashion, it produces energy called kinetic energy, which is used to turn into mechanical energy, which both of these energies are energy in motion instead of potential energy, which is the energy of it resting, such as at the top of the surface of the water. Then this energy is turned into electricity through the spinning fashion of the turbine. And now, to talk to you about wind energy, here's Tyler. Thank you, Wesley. So one thing you may have seen earlier in the graphic presented to us by Logan was a turbine. Now, there's an interesting thing that you think about turbines is the first thing, the, the biggest resource with turbines is the wind, right? So what do you think is the most important thing to have with a turbine? You may be thinking wind, right? But did you know it's possible to have too much wind? If you have too much wind, oftentimes you'll run into very uh, extremely dangerous mechanical problems with your wind turbine. So it's very important to choose a site. Now, as you can see by this graphic here, this site is nearly ideal for wind turbines because, as you can tell, it is along the coast. Now, along, areas along the coast often have very reliable wind resources and are able 
to sustain uh, high, but not too high, uh, winds for uh, year round. So if you can put that down. Uh, some interesting things that you may not know about wind turbines is that there are two different main types of turbines. There's ones with gears, as we saw earlier with Logan's graphic, and there are also direct drive turbines. Now these geared turbines are highly efficient, but often break down and have mechanical failure because of the many gears that have to be used to change the rotational speed of the blades into a rotational speed that can put electricity onto the grid with a turbine, a uh, big gearbox has to be used. However, new technology is developing in which the blade and shaft connected to the blade is directly attached to the turbine, which allows for a much higher, rate, uh, lower rate of failure. Now, uh, these are extremely effective ways of creating renewable energy due to the fact that they are relatively inexpensive compared to other sources of electricity such as coal and gas. Uh, they use a renewable resource which is wind which means that uh, they are theoretically unlimited resources uh, the wind which is uh, created the wind wind is created by the uneven heating of the earth's surface by the sun. Now uh, the final and most important part of uh, wind farms is the fact that they are competitively priced compared to uh, other forms of electricity such as nuclear coal and gas which are usually the big contenders that you hear being talked about. Uh, at 2.5 cents per kilowatt hour uh, wind farms are highly feasible and extremely important and should be uh, looked at further in the United States as a renewable energy resource. Now uh, to talk to us a little bit more about some more turbine technology is uh, Jeff. Thanks Tyler. My name is Jed Hewitt and I will be discussing steam turbines. Steam turbine generators are used to convert by heating water to high temperatures where it's converted into steam. This steam energy is then used to rotate a turbine creating mechanical and rotational energy. This rotational energy is used to generate electricity by a generator attached to the turbine. This diagram illustrates the, com the components of a steam generator. The point at one is the heat source, often used as fossil fuels or solar energy, produces heat, heating the water in the boiler at point two, converting into steam. If fossil fuels are used as the heating source, the pollutants will be removed through an exhaust pipe. However, if solar heating is used, this is not needed. At point four, steam is pumped in the turbine, which spins the blades of the turbine. And then at five, this rotational energy is converted into electricity using the generator. The water or the steam is then uh, pumped into a cooling, a cooling reservoir, which cools the steam and that can be removed into the atmosphere at point seven. Some of the steam is converted back into water, which is then repumped into the boiler and can be re reused throughout the system, uh, throughout the entire process. Now, Tyler will provide a conclusion over the entire presentation. So as you can tell, it is extremely important to consider turbines as the primary source of energy produced in the United States. Now, whether it be nuclear power, whether it be coal, whether it be hydroelectric, and even solar, as we just found out by Jed, uh, all of these end up uh, turning a spinning turbine, which produces in the end electricity. Without turbines, we wouldn't be able to do nearly anything that we do today with electricity. And uh, let it be said, the turbines are one of the most important aspects of energy production in the United States. So with that, we will conclude our presentation. Thank you for watching.